three things that you can start doing today to increase your bottom line tomorrow. These are things that have much debate. And I think a lot of uh, salons that I work with make this mistake. I'm a business coach. I'm here to help you. I want you to succeed. These are easy things to do if you just get in the habit of doing it. The first thing, reputation management. You wouldn't get so caught up and hurt when you get a bad review. And I understand it's human nature. But the reality is you need to look at a bad review as a positive because it's an opportunity for you to respond in a positive way. And nobody that's reading your reviews expects you to have 100% perfect scores. It doesn't look real. They don't believe that that's a realistic indication of the service they can expect when they see five stars. If they see majority five stars and they, they see that outlier, right? They see one person that has some crazy complaint. Maybe it's cost. Well, for that person that's upset about the service costing too much, there's a hundred other people that want to pay that price because that's industry standard for quality service, and that's what you're offering. So a negative is not always bad, and the trick is to respond to it in a positive way that makes you look good. Trust me, one bad review and a good response is better than all five stars, 100% perfect scores. The other thing is, and I don't, I don't get this, book appointments when a client's done and they're leaving, don't ask them a yes or no question. Ask them in a way, what day would you like to book your next appointment for? What day of the week is good for you? Don't give them a yes or no opportunity. Don't say, hey, can we book your next appointment right now? Because it's easy for them to say, no, I'll go online and I'll book it, I'll book it uh, tomorrow when I know my schedule is. Say, hey, let's book your appointment before you before you leave so you're set up for next time because there's not a lot of openings available. And I want to get you a good appointment. Answer the phone. When the phone rings, pick it up by the third ring. It should be a salon-wide policy. If there's no one available to answer the phone, the receptionist isn't there, you're with a client or one of the other employees are with a client, hold on a second, let me get the phone real quick. Pick up the phone. Hi, this is so-and-so salon. This is, you know, so-and-so speaking. I'm with a client right now. Can I take a message and call you right back? Whatever it is, but pick it up, capture that lead. Don't let that lead disappear because I guarantee you, they're going to hang that phone up and call the next person on the list. And I understand the apprehension answering the phone because you get you get hung up on the phone for a long time and you have a client, but you need to practice ways of answering the phone that, that snip that in the butt. Don't give them the opportunity. You have caller ID and they're giving you, you don't care what the story is, just say it really politely, hey, I have your number as blah, 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 blah. Can I call you right back at this number? I'm sorry to cut you off. I'll call you right back. For every person that is a little annoyed that you are quick, there's 10 people who will never return that call again because you didn't answer or went to voicemail. Voicemail is great, not for salons, not for salons booking appointments, not for salons that need customers and chairs. Now, how much extra money will you make if you do these three things? Let's just say on an average month, 100 people look at your reviews on Yelp and you have one bad review, you responded to it. I would think that at least one person will be persuaded to try you from your response and that reputation management. In a year, that's at least 12 new clients. Booking appointments for people leave, I would use the same ratio. I would say there's probably if one client that'll fall off every month if you don't book them before they leave. So if you retain one additional client a month, there's another 12 clients for the year. And answering the phone, probably even bigger than one client a month. But let's just say one client a month you, you pick up that's a regular that comes in every two weeks or every month for a year that you wouldn't have gotten because they would have just hung up on the voicemail, dialed the next person in the list, and ended up becoming a loyal customer there. So that's three a month. That's 36 a year. If a lifetime value of a client is $1,000, that's $36,000 a year in additional revenue that you would make by implementing these three things into the process. It could be bigger depending on the size of your slot.
train and teach and instruct your staff to do these things. Obviously, reputation management, you want to probably handle that yourself. I'm going to do a whole um, module on the best way to, to do that reputation management. So hopefully this gives you some things to think about, and I would love to have you sign up for my coaching program where we do one-on-one -on -one group coaching. Subscribe to this YouTube channel.